Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On. It's Monday, the morning after, the night before. It was actually yesterday afternoon, but our 2-1 defeat at home to Southampton. What a shame, really. I don't want to bang on about how negative it is or who played badly or whatever too much. It was just a shame, really, wasn't it? Because we had, you know, all the flags out. They wanted to make it a big day. Uh, they wanted. They did the lap of, of honour afterwards. And it feels like to me like there have been a few times where I've been at the lane for our last home game of the season and we don't get the result. And yesterday just would have been great because it meant we'd have guaranteed second place. Now we have to go to Newcastle and get a point. Obviously, we'll be hoping that Everton turn a, uh, lose to Sunderland in the week because I think, realistically, it'll be better if Newcastle have nothing to play for uh, than the motivation to stay up on that last day. However, I said this in my match review yesterday, I do think uh, if we go to St. James's Park on Sunday, if Newcastle come at us, which they'll have to do to some degree, although Rafa Benitez sides, they always play with a defensive shape first. Um, but they will have to come at us to some degree, and then I think to some degree we may be able to pick them off uh, if that happens. Let's hope so. Anyway, we only need a point. Let's hope we don't go there playing for a point. Let's hope we go there playing for all three. We've got a good win like we did last season where Harry Kane scored his 30th goal of the season there. And let's also hope he can get a goal or two again too because uh, we want him to get that golden boot although I do have to say I wondered whether that was on his mind yesterday when he was uh, by the byline just before half time and he could have just squared it and we'd have scored uh, but anyway uh, as usual this is your Monday uh, five things I felt we learned and of course I'm going to talk about the five things I felt we learned from yesterday's game against Southampton firstly I want to talk about Hugo Lloris now I've noticed after the game yesterday, some of the pundits and then some of the people, uh, Spurs fans and others on social media, giving Hugo Lloris some stick uh, about the two goals yesterday. Now, I'm going to put my goalkeeper gloves on a little bit here, metaphorically. Goalkeepers get abuse when people do not know what goalkeeping is all about. That first goal yesterday, yes, he got a hand to it and it just slithered over the line. But it's not his fault that he can't save it from six yards. It's the defender's fault. The defender needs to get a f across and make sure he gets a block on that ball and make sure he's not f uh, the man isn't free in the area. The fact that Hugo got a hand on that from six yards when the ball's coming across, he's going one way and it's you know he doesn't know. There are no cues in that small amount of time for him to know where the ball's going to go. So the fact that he got a hand to it just shows how good he is, not how bad he is. I promise you that is such a difficult save. Ball's come across, he's got something on it, whipped it quickly, and he's got down to it incredibly fast, and it was just unlucky that it slithered over the line. Um, second goal, people are giving him some abuse about because it went in and it looked like it was going slowly. Well, watch it again. I urge you to watch it again. Stephen Davis comes across the box, plays a 1-2. So the goalkeeper, Hugo, is having to move across. He's not sure what's happening. Eventually, uh, after missing a couple of tackles, Davis gets his shot away. It comes through about three uh, bodies. Ryan Mason's there, you see him turning, and then it's right in the corner, and it's kind of been hit with the inside of his foot as well. So it's kind of almost bent slightly along the ground into the corner. Hugo doesn't see it till really late. It's not his fault. Do you know how big goal mouths are? Just watch Smithy versus Slat's penalty shootout from uh, the weekend. It went out on Saturday. I'm supposed to save, you know, at least three penalties from Smithy. The goal's huge. And Hugo, I met him last week, watched the interview uh, that we did with him. I think that went out on Friday. Uh, Hugo's, you know... He's the same size as me. He's bigger built, but he's the same height as me. The goals are massive. So just because a ball go, looks like it's gone in slowly or he's got a hand to it, that doesn't mean he's made a mistake. And it really annoys me, I have to say, when pundits who've never played in goal give it the big one about how keepers have made mistakes. Because a lot of the time, they haven't. Obviously, when it's obvious, then you, know, you can say that's a mistake. But so many times, you just hear pundits saying, oh, he's made, the keeper's made a hash of that, whatever. A lot of the time, it's not it's not the case. It's so difficult, goalkeeping. And uh, Hugo Lloris, I just want to back him up because he's had an unbelievable season, not just in terms of his shot stopping, but his communication, the way he leads the side, uh, the way he bosses his area, and, of course, coming off his line, which I think he's in the top two goalkeepers in the world in terms of reading the play and coming off his line. So a bit of solidarity for Hugo there. Uh, absolute legend. Definitely wants to stay at the club from the way he was talking to me in his interview and uh, very excited to have him as our leader for years to come. Second thing I wanted to talk about in terms of the five things we learnt, um, it's not just about yesterday's result, but in terms of the last few results. Now, a lot of uh, paper articles and people on social media are saying, uh, starting to say, oh, Pochettino sides starting to lose their fitness towards the end of the season again. That's just a regular thing that people like to call up. As far as I'm concerned, 
uh, we didn't draw against West Brom because we were unfit. We drew against West Brom because Tony Pulis put 11 men behind the ball and played it like a Tony Pulis side. After that, I think it's, t it's a mental fragility thing uh, or a, a kind of emotional fitness kind of thing, which is we lost the league, let's face it, uh, pretty much, and therefore it became very difficult. The Chelsea game was a complete one-off. Uh, we could have won that game, but it just didn't quite happen. It wasn't our night. And then yesterday, I think there's a little bit of Southampton set up really well. They played a, a, a great shape, they had a great shape, and they had pace both at fullbacks and in the wide areas going forward that really troubled us. And, you know, even then, if we got that second goal just for half time from Harry Kane, I think we would have gone on to win or draw that game. But to me, it's not about this fitness thing. It's, about, it's more about it just hasn't gone our way in the last few games. And, of course, we've lost Deli Ali and Moussa Dembele. Uh, and, you know, you take those kind of massively important parts out of any team. You know, you take two of the best three players or best four players you've got on your team out of any side. And you have to bring in your squad players. It's not going to be easy. And Southampton, if you look at their form, incredible run they've been on. They've picked up the second most amount of points of any team in 2016. Fantastic form. It's not easy to beat those teams. So I'm just, you know, I'm not going to go ahead with that, oh, Pochettino's hard fitness regime means that all his teams drop off at the end. It's not as simple as that. As far as I'm concerned, if we've beaten West Brom and then you know, I think we would have probably won that Chelsea match. I really do. I think we'd have found a way. We wouldn't have lost our heads quite so much, uh, even though I'm still, like I said before, still very proud of the aggression and the assertion and just the, the hard manner in which they faced up to Chelsea, who, who play games like that all the time, let's face it. So I just want to talk about that. I also want to talk about whether actually these kind of three results uh, could perhaps work in our favour in terms of how we go into next season. Could they be the kick up the backside we need to stop any complacency from happening? Hopefully we get our point or three points at Newcastle to be we finish second. And then Pochettino, when they all come back in after the Euros, he says to them, now listen, you know, you had an amazing season last, last year, but the very last bit, the very form in the last few games, it would be easy for you to accidentally start the season like that. So he'll be saying, look at that. We've got to start all over again, get back up. And uh, I'm hoping that that's, that's how it'll be. Just stop any thoughts of complacency because we come second or third in the league and just be like, you've got to start all over again. Keep improving, keep working, keep learning how to be winners and get off to a great start next season. Because let's not forget, we didn't win in our first four games last season. And Harry Kane didn't really score till nigh on uh, October, November time. Uh, so if he would start scoring from the first day, I think we can be a real threat. So the second thing I want to talk about was, uh, you know, is that, are these results a little kick up the backside that maybe we need? Third thing I want to talk about, and I'd never mentioned him in these five things before, so I'm going to talk about him now, Hung Min Son. Now, Hung Min Son, when he joined the club, everyone was incredibly excited, had a great start, scored a few goals, scored that winner against Crystal Palace at home. I waxed lyrical about him, love the way he picks up little spaces in between the lines, takes the ball, runs at pace, gives it, goes again. And I think over the last couple of games, he started getting that back again. The um, suspension to Deli Ali has allowed him to start a couple of games. And it just shows the difference between starting a game and starting a couple of games in a row and coming on as substitute. It's so much easier to get your match fitness up to scratch because yesterday it started looking like Hung Min Son was back to the player we know he can be. And I'm very excited about his potential for next season. I really am. He's started at Spurs a lot stronger than Lamella has, even though he had his injury. Uh, Son and he struggled to get back in the team and struggled to find form but let's face it it took Lamella maybe a year and a half almost two years before we started to see him come into his best form which I think he is doing now and I think if Hung Min Son can get a great preseason behind him next season he can really be pushing for a starting place in that 11 because I, I love the positions he take up, takes up I love the, the way he, he plays with a smile on his face he's a happy player and he's a good finisher that finish at Chelsea good finish uh, the finish yesterday, so composed, so many more players would have, would have been less composed there. I mean, let's face it, Harry Kane had a very similar chance uh, just 20 minutes after, and he wasn't quite as composed. And like I said earlier, should have passed that one probably. So third thing I want to talk about, very excited by the development of Hung Min Son. If he can stay clear of injury and have a good preseason behind him, I think he could be a better player for us next season than a lot of fans think. I'm very excited about him. Uh, fourth thing I want to talk about, just mentioned it a little bit there, Eric Lamella. I've been talking about him a bit in the last few uh, weeks and is in the match review yesterday, just improving all the time. Uh, i tell you what, I may have said this before, but if he had a yard more pace, he would be an unbelievable player. Yesterday, he was using his trickery to beat two men, three men at a time. 
Uh, but he's giving the ball to, he's, what I like actually is him and Ericsson are starting to get a real good understanding between them. They uh, fire the ball at each other really quick knowing that they've both got the touch available to take it down and often they'll play little passes, one twos, one touch, two touch and just really get past players uh, in uh, the opposition third in that way. So I really like how they're developing together. I really like Lamella's attitude. I'm excited for him to sign a new contract. Who would have thought that a year ago when, let's face it, a lot of us were wondering if he was ever going to make the grade at Spurs. Um, he's definitely far less of what Craig Mitch would describe as a haircut player now. He's putting his tackles in very hard. He often does this thing, which is very bizarre, where he slides in for a tackle way before the ball has even got to the opponent, just almost in like a way to, what are you going to do about it? And uh, obviously, he's, he's not getting as booked as he used to. Uh, he's still got a booking in him, obviously. He's still got that Argentinian fire in his belly. But uh, I do like the way he's improving both uh, offensively and defensively. So I'm going to big him up again because, you know, I feel like a little bit I've got to make up for all the times that I wasn't sure about him earlier in the season. So Eric Lamella, you keep improving, my boy. You keep working. You and Sonny next season with Ericsson and Ali also fighting for those places could be fantastic. Really, really exciting about uh, the forward players that we've got, uh, especially once we add some additions to that in terms of strikers as well. The fifth and final thing I want to talk about in terms of what we learned yesterday, Maurizio Pochettino made some comments in his press conference after when asked you know, how it felt that we hadn't yet definitely finished above Woolwich. And he made a comment talking about how we need to forget about our neighbour or the people down the road, or as he called it, someone in another house, and we need to start thinking like a big club. Now, I totally understand what Pochettino was saying. Uh, and, of course, it's important that we start believing in ourselves as a proper top two, top three club. And that kind of belief will allow us to push on and uh, get behind the boys to maybe go and do that again and uh, challenge for the title again. However, I do think it's important that Pochettino realises how much it has hurt every time Woolwich fans have celebrated that St. Totteringham's Day every year. Because obviously Maurizio Pochettino, he goes to training every day and, and, and just goes to work at Spurs. So he's only surrounded by Spurs fans. We all have to go to work surrounded by Arsenal fans. And so we get it in our neck all the time and it's just over and over and over again. So although I understand his comments, I also feel like maybe he, maybe he knows this, I'm sure he does, but he can't say it out in the press. But it would have been nice for him just to say, look, you know, we want that as well, as much as you do, because we're working and playing for you fans, and we know how it feels for you guys in your places of work, amongst your friends, when, let's face it, they're all taking the piss out of you for not having finished above them since 1995. So we want that. I think Pochettino must know deep down that we want it. It would have been nice if he'd said it, but I understand. We want that one point, we can get a Newcastle. Let's make it three, and let's have a party up in Newcastle, Sunday night, we'll be there, let us know in the comments box how many of you are going to be there and we'll do it Geordie Shaw style with the Tottenham boys up in Newcastle celebrating a second place finish in the Premier League. Who would have thought that? Honestly, who would have thought that early in the season, in pre-season when we were realistically thinking we'll probably finish fifth or sixth again. Hopefully we can improve our style of play. Hopefully we can bed in more youngsters. Well, we've done all of that and we've had a title challenge and we lost to a team who were just unbelievable all season. Really, just hopefully a one-off, and hopefully next season we can be the team who doesn't have to suffer from any transition. We'll have the same manager, same players, a few nice additions with no big egos who just want to work and get involved. We can win those first four games, bring Moussa Dembele back into the fold. Anything could happen, guys. Anyway, that's been the five things that I felt we learned from yesterday. Let us know what you thought about it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV. Find us on Facebook, also Spurred on TV, where we're doing a lot more Facebook videos. And very soon, we're going to be starting some Facebook Live Q&As for you guys to get your questions answered by me and Jack Bryden and all the other guys at Spurred on. Most importantly, stay behind the boys. Newcastle away Sunday. Come on, you Spurs. Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On. I'm here with the one and only captain of our wonderful club, Hugo Lloris. Hugo, thank you so much nice for talking you. to me. Lovely to meet you too.